friends, I need to build a replacement part, and we're going to build it in Tinkercad. So let's get cracking. So a friend contacted me asking if I could make one of these. It was for a storage container. Obviously, it is a pretty simple shape. The only problem are these two pegs. I've got a strategy to fix that. Let me show you what I got. So step one, found a flat piece of wood with a hole. So now I can stick this in, lay it flat, and trace it. I just need to put a piece of paper there. That pushed through that easily. I've got it right to the edge. And now let's trace as close as we can to get the outline of that shape. Notice I came off the edge, so I'm going to just back up and do it one more time. Of course, I did have to find the exact right size piece of wood. I couldn't get one that had extra space. That would be silly. Just a note, I would have made my life a lot easier if I would have had that J shape perpendicular to the paper. Just like that, I've got my shape. And let's take it over to the scanner and bring it into the computer. Of course, if you don't have a scanner, you could just take a photo of it and bring it in. But I like this for accuracy. Now that we've got it traced, let's also check some measurements. All right, so we can quickly see that it's going to be about 80 millimeters in that direction. I'll show you how that matters in just a moment. All right, so let's bring up the scan app. Mine is on the second tab, and I can simply hit scan. Just like that, it's done. I'm going to close that tool, and I'm going to open Snagit. You can use whatever photo editor you want. I purchased Snagit from Camtasia, and I absolutely love it. Let's click File open and let's find that project we just scanned here it is and now i'm going to get rid of the junk first thing i'll do is crop so i can get right to the shape that i'm thinking of and now i'm going to clean up those edges if i switch to the eraser i can just tap tap so there's no extra speckles that i don't really need this is where if you're more accurate when you trace it can even turn out better you don't like what you did? Of course, use undo. I'm going to change to a smaller size. Let's see if we can get in here. I know that for what I'm building, I do not have to be perfect. But I am going to show you one neat trick. Because I'm in a tool that can draw, I can also erase a line that I don't like. Before I draw that line, I'm going to make this so that it's straight. It'll just make everything easier the rest of the project. I'm going to simply select it and move it a little bit. What that does is it gives me a rotation handle. Now I can twist this and get it so it is square to the bottom of the little piece of paper. I can switch to the line tool and I can simply click and drag to make that line. Once I set it down, if I switch to the move command, at least in this tool, I can also grab it. I'm going to do control zoom to zoom in and make sure it connects just like I want. Friends, with that in place, I can now click File and Export. I have mine set to Export to the Downloads folder. I'm gonna turn on Automatic File Name and just hit Next and Finish. Now we need to go to the tool, Pick SVG. I simply search for it and click on the free SVG converter. We do wanna upload a picture, and there is the part that we uploaded. I can simply hit Open. It shows up immediately. It gives us a chance to use the edge, or we could use the internal. Usually I use the internal ones because I like the basic shape. If we look closely at edge two, it looks like there's a little nugget out here. I don't want that, so I'm gonna switch back to edge one and simply hit download SVG. I'm gonna call it hinge tub. I've done this a couple times as I was experimenting. I'm gonna put a two after this one and save changes. Friends, this is where we would traditionally choose create new 3D design, but I'm going to actually show you the one I built. Tinkercad saves to the cloud so I can just click over here and choose Tinker This. Now this is kind of fun and funny. As you can see, I built it using guess and check. I've got it working and then I came up with this idea for the new one. Let me show you how much cooler the new one is. We simply click on import. We choose the file, there is our hinge tub, and we're gonna choose okay. We're gonna choose art, and then remember that 79.7? We can type that in right now so it comes in the correct size. Bingo, there's our shape. 
Notice it's hollow. We can fix that by choosing Silhouette. Now let's get some heights adjusted. If we click over here, we can find that the real height is 13.8. So I can click on this and change it to 13.8. Of course, we also need the raised piece. So I'm going to do Control D. So now there are two of them sitting there. I'm going to put the work plane on top. And when I hit D to drop, the second one raises to the top. We need to cut off the bottom of the J. I'm going to do that by putting the work plane over here so I can bring out a whole cube and I want to trim that flat. I'm going to simply grab the black handle to stretch it past that way. I'm going to stretch it past this way. I'm also going to stretch it past with this black handle as well. If you use the white handles, it goes two directions at a time, so it can be harder to line up. Once you do have it aligned, I'm going to simply grab those two shapes. Notice I'm choosing an angle where it only touches two, and then I can do Control G to group. Just like that, that edge is created. W for work plane to put it back on the ground. I can hit D to drop, and the correct height for the whole piece is 23.2. I'm going to hide this for a second, click on this one and change it to 23.2 and press enter. Now when I do show all, bingo, that's our part. If I take those two, I can do control G to group. I do have a tiny seam right here, but for this kind of part, I don't care. It's not going to show up. Now I want to place these parts. I will show you quickly if we ungroup that. It is just the wedge and the rectangle. I did put them at the right sizes and measurements. That was still just guess and check. I can do undo to make them one piece. And now let me show you how to put them where they go. Shift select, L for a line, and I want this one to be the master, and I want it to be to the very top edge. So now they're lined up. Now I can click on this part right here, do control D, press W for work plane, Put the work plane on the new shape and do D to drop. Bam, it's in place. I'm going to put the work plane on this side. Click the part, control D, and D to drop. That one's in place too. Finally, put the work plane back down on the ground. Do control D, and then I'm just going to shift nudge this over. And then this part was just guess and check to get it lined up. When you zoom in, of course, you can switch to a more accurate nudge. If you want to measure it perfect, you can. I found out that I didn't need to. It worked awesome. Lastly, grab them all and do Control G to group. We have just built a replacement part. Notice we are missing the pegs. I did those right here. I'm going to just do Control D and drag these out so they're ready for 3D printing. If we zoom in a little bit and double click, this part is simply a pair of cylinders, 3.7 and 4.1. That is what we needed to pound into that hole. I also have the height set at 8.5 so that when they get pounded in, they fit exactly right. All right, so there are our parts. I've nudged them into place. They are ready to be exported. We simply hit export, only the three shapes, STL, and I'm going to name this one Lakewood Part 5 and save the shape. Now let's bounce to Bamboo Studio. Surprise, surprise, we've got a brand new version. It's got a few improvements. I'm going to quickly download that and I'll be back to do this video in just a moment. And a few minutes later, it has been updated. Today we're going to start with a brand new project. I'm going to simply move to add a new part. I want Lakewood part five. So on my AMS, I have got the generic ABS in number one. Don't forget after you do this step, you also need to go to the device and you need to make sure you pick them over here. So I've got generic ABS and the color chosen. If you're using Bamboo Labs material, it should find it itself. But out here I had generic PLA. So I had to make sure I selected that and picked the color so that it was appearing correctly every time that I used it. With those in place, I'm going to go back to prepare. Got that ABS. I want to choose the strength one. And I'm going to pick slice all. 
And now we can print the plate. It's got the A1 selected, and bingo, I can send it to the printer. After a moment, the device menu will appear, and if you hit play, you'll be able to monitor all of your printing from wherever you're at. And here is our finished part, printed in ABS, super smooth, and our two little pegs. Let's pound those in quick. I've simply got a vise right here. And we can get that started and pound it into place. And of course, repeat on the other side. Easy peasy. Friends, of course, right there, you've got the final product. And I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and gained some awesome skills along the way. Of course, have a glorious day and keep tinkering. Friends, as I wrap up, I do want to remind you about my website, hlmodtech.com. Of course, I've got a tab dedicated to Tinkercad with all sorts of amazing categories. Below that, you'll find the day one favorites, the useful starters, and the Tinkercad essentials. If you scroll down a little farther, you will find my course, Tinkercad in 20 Days. It is fully explained in this video. Of course, I do want to highlight the coupon code 25HLTinkerCAD as it'll get you 25% off any of the awesome courses at cadclass.org. Of course, you can get there by simply clicking this link. Friends, just a quick reminder about the sweet built-in messaging tool. You can click that button, add your question, comment, or suggestion, and reach me almost instantly. You can also use the link to the Tinkercad Community Discord. As you can see, there are a boatload of members, and it's a fantastic place to talk everything Tinkercad. Finally, friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Don't forget you absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.